Are you suffering from the painful effects of stomach ulcers? Or have you just been diagnosed with Helicobacter pylori? Do you have worries and questions that need to be addressed? I know what it feels like when you have to deal with the unknown. So my aim is to put your mind at ease by giving you all the information you need to help you overcome your stomach ulcers and your H. pylori infection in the safest possible way. I would like to assure you that there are literally hundreds of thousands of people around the world who are in exactly the same position as you, so you are not alone. What is H. pylori? How did I get it? These are the two most common questions that people ask. It's really important that you get the answers to these questions right away because this may help to prevent you from infecting others. Helicobacter pylori is a hardy, spiral-shaped bacterium and it is found mainly in the stomach. It colonizes in the mucosa membrane of the esophagus and stomach lining and uses its shape to penetrate the stomach lining. In most cases, you will have been infected by another person or by consuming contaminated food or water. The reason for this is that H. pylori is believed to be transmitted orally. Because H. pylori has been found in oral cavities, you could have been infected simply by someone kissing you on the lips. Scientific evidence also proves that it is also possible for spouses and partners to get infected through sexual activity. And sadly, it's also been proven that infected mothers are infecting their babies through breastfeeding. If you or your spouse or children have been tested for H. pylori and the results were positive, then it's equally important to test your entire family for the presence of H. pylori. If you do not do this, then you run the risk of starting an ongoing cycle of infection and reinfection of all family members. Okay, let's take some time to focus on some facts here. These are basic facts that are published all over the internet and in medical journals. H. pylori infections are one of the most widespread known to man, with 75% of the world's population infected right now. That is over 4.6 billion people. And according to current statistics, this means that over 820 million people alive right now will develop stomach ulcers caused by infection of H. pylori. The World Health Organization also reports that over 50% of new gastric cancer patients are infected with H. pylori. H. pylori is not difficult to get rid of, but with this type of infection, it is very important that it is treated correctly. I'll get to that in a minute. If you suspect that you are infected and you haven't been treated or tested for H. pylori yet, then it will be a good idea to listen to the most common symptoms of H. pylori that I'm going to share with you now. If you feel you are experiencing any of these symptoms, then we recommend you ask your doctor for a diagnosis to make sure. The important thing to remember here is that H. pylori symptoms will differ from person to person and that it is quite common for people to experience three or four of these symptoms all at the same time. Here are the most common symptoms, and they are in no particular order. Heartburn or acid reflux, diarrhea, constipation, flatulence, bloating, fatigue and low energy, nausea and vomiting, unplanned weight and muscle loss, or difficulty losing weight, Hormonal symptoms including mood swings and PMS, depression and anxiety, gum disease, bad breath, and other oral infections, blocked nose, painful sinuses, and lastly, colds and infections. If you suspect you have an ulcer, then this may be fairly easy to confirm because there are fewer ulcer symptoms than H. pylori symptoms. Here are the three most common symptoms of all types of stomach ulcers. Abdominal pain, heartburn or acid reflux, or abdominal discomfort, normally felt two to four hours before or after meals, depending on the type of ulcer. How can you confirm if you have this or not? We do basically a stool test. We feel that's the most comprehensive test. Most doctors will do blood. They think that's the most comprehensive. 
the blood antibody test basically tests for the antibodies. You know, these antibodies can be present for a three, four, five years, even if the infection is gone. breath test, which is very common. First, the test operator connects the ID circuit to the patient. The nasal cannula is gently placed in the patient's nostril, and the tubing is arranged until it fits comfortably. The breath ID system then begins collecting baseline data. The baseline is an analysis of the patient's normal breath. While the system is collecting data, the operator prepares the test drink. The patient drinks the entire solution. If H. pylori bacteria are present in the stomach, the carbon-13 urea is metabolized and appears in the patient's breath. If H. pylori bacteria are not present in the stomach, the carbon-13 urea is naturally eliminated. A stomach biopsy is another one. Okay, this is the third one. This is when they go into the stomach and the small intestine using endoscopy, and they take a little piece of the stomach to biopsy it to see if you have H. pylori. Well, you know, H. pylori lives in the patches, or it actually go, uh, it burns itself into the stomach lining. So a lot of the times, these stomach biopsies will miss the actual area where the H. pylori is. Let's talk about treatment. What are the treatment options? It's very, um, very easy to treat, usually with a combination of medications. Um, normally an antibiotic, because we are talking about a bacteria, so you do need antibiotics to rid your body of that infection. Mm -hmm. The second is normally a medication that reduces stomach acid, so it helps quell some of those symptoms that you're feeling uh, within your stomach. It makes you feel better as the antibiotic is making you better. Okay, so if you have any of these symptoms, the first step is to go see your doctor. Absolutely.